Hey everyone, it's Mike with It's Pittsfield Tonight. I'm going to jump right into it and let's start with Wakona Park. So, uh, many of you, I'm sure, yesterday saw the news that this year, or the 2022 season, the grandstand seating for Wakona Park will be closed. It failed inspection and was deemed unsafe and will be closed. Uh, they're going to bring in temporary bleacher seating or something like that. They're going to try to accommodate for this and continue with the season. You know, <sighs> I think why a lot of people are upset about this, including myself, it's another thing like, why are we just finding out about this now? This obviously didn't happen overnight. And you know, the loss of that, because that is a loss. I know they're going to try to make this work so people can still go to games, but it's, it's a loss and it's an embarrassment. It's just another thing falling apart in the city that doesn't seem like it needed to. You know, when is leadership in the city going to take the initiative, take the proverbial bull by the horns and rally the public with something? to inspire community again. You know, this would have been a great project for that and would be Wakona Park. I mean, you could have had, I mean, I can see people volunteering their time, fundraisers, community wanting to get involved, you know, bringing baseball back to the city. Let's do something to bring community back. And that falls on community leaders. And it does, it falls on city hall. That's, you know, when you're elected mayor, that's one of your biggest responsibilities. You know, the mayor ain't out there doing the finances and doing this and doing that. She has a team of people. You, you appoint your department heads like she has, and you are the figurehead, though. You're the, the person who everyone's looking to for answers. And, and I think this is just another example of failure. And I hate to say that and make it sound negative, but... This could have been a great opportunity for community. You know, there's things going on that you'd, you'd think you'd see more help or more promotion from the city from. Uh, like the, the Harry Bateman uh, Memorial Fishing Derby or fish, yeah, that's, that's coming up. I gotta call Stevie Bateman on that and get him on for an interview about that. But that's another thing. He works his butt off on that. And that's another thing. He could use help from the city. Why don't they get behind him on that project and? I don't know, but that's why people are mad about Wakona Park. So hopefully they do something. Hopefully this can turn into a positive thing. You know, but we need that. As a, we, as a city, we need... Pittsfield has taken a hit. And, you know, city elected politicians hate to hear when people go, you know, there's not a lot to do around here at times. And, you know, we lost the mall and we lost this and businesses shut down coming out of COVID has been, you know, for the whole world, paralyzing. But, you know, Wakona Park this year, that would have been, that's a big deal for people. So they're still going to try to go, I'm sure, and make it work and support their team. And But somewhere, leadership needs to get in there and be a cheerleader for the city. And anytime somebody speaks up when they're upset about something like this, don't just call them being negative. I mean, this is, it's unacceptable. You know, I know like not all our politicians uh, when, had the same experience all of us did during COVID. I know for me during COVID, it was trying to keep my father alive, uh, trying to keep myself alive as far with food uh, and struggling to exist. And I remember the day I ran into the mayor's husband and the mayor at the grocery store and they had just got back from their vacation and they were all sunburnt and they literally just got back. They hadn't even, I think, went home yet. And I remember how angry that made me feel when I left. I'm like, vacation? They're going to the beach, and she's getting pay raises. And, man, I'm telling you, we do live in an era where politicians are so disconnected from the everyday person, even right down to little local schmunkle politics like in Pittsfield, where, you know, local politics like this should be all about true public servants. But, ah. I could go on for hours on that. It just infuriates me. So there's a lot of stuff going on, though. Wakona Park's one pay attention to. Uh, hopefully the community, there's a way we can get involved to be a part of that. And, you know, I think, I think that's something that baseball could be so 
big for the city again. I mean, when I was a kid, I remember going to Wakona Park and getting Greg Maddox's autograph, Randy Johnson's autograph, Mike Piazza's autograph. Uh, I'm, so many big players came through there when we had the Mets and the Cubs. Uh, baseball was so important to the city. I just, it's sad to see how we've let everything, including something like that, go. But anyways, all right, I got to get off that. So there's a lot of other stuff going on. Um, some positive stuff, uh, Desheen Moore, many of you know I did uh, some interviews with Desheen back over the winter. Uh, we organized a trash pickup together on the west side. Uh, Desheen's a great guy, and he founded and started the Beat the Streets tournament. Um, I'm going to have Desheen back on. We're going to be talking about that. I want to help him promote that this year. He's really pushing that forward. And Desheen also owns Mr. Feats, which is a new store uh, on North Street, and I want to do a separate interview with him about that. So, again, I'm really excited about that. So that's coming up. Uh, Desheen, I'll be in touch with you in the next couple days. Also, um, this Saturday is National Record Store Day, which I think is pretty cool. And here locally in Pittsfield, we have uh, a local company, Jerry Colvin. Many of you know Jig, uh as how I know him. He owns Patient Zero Records. Uh, I'm going to have Jerry on to do an interview about that. Uh, what he's built is pretty awesome. It really is. Um, so anyways, I'm excited to talk to Jerry about that. Um, the district attorney, Andrea, did reach out back to me. So we're going to set something up uh, the end of May, beginning of, the, of June. So I'm really excited about that. And thank you very much to uh, District Attorney Harrington. I appreciate her getting back to me on that one. Um, also, Tim Chagru, who is running for DA this year. I'll be having him back on. And uh, Bobby Sullivan, who's running for DA. Um, so all that's going on. Uh, the Police Advisory Board meeting. I got to touch on that. I don't know what this police advisory board is even doing. I think that whole thing needs to be disassembled again and reworked or something because I just feel like it's done nothing. It hasn't gotten anywhere. It hasn't served any purpose yet that has benefited the community or benef it just hasn't done that. And, you know, we had the tragedy recently where the young man lost his life. And I know we're going to be hearing a lot more about that soon. Um, I'm not going to speculate on any of that. I just think that that would be wrong. But what a horrible tragedy. I mean, a 22-year-old man lost his life, and that is awful. It's heartbreaking. And we'll have to find out more what happened. But I don't know about this police advisory board. It doesn't seem to be functioning correctly. And when people talk about we need mental health counselors, um, absolutely we need better mental health services. Absolutely. But why does it have to always be we need to take that money from the police department to have mental health services? Why can't we find the funding to have those mental health services? Why can't we find the funding to have better training and better mental health services for our police officers? Why can't we improve that whole system? Why does it have to be to take away? I don't get that conversation. And why do we not have body cameras? I don't know. That is something that has to happen. That's got to happen. It's crazy that in the year 2022, our police department doesn't have body cameras. Um, all right, that's it on that. So all that's coming up uh, with Desheen, the DA stuff, Jerry coming on, um, and I'm also going to reach out to Peter Marchetti. I just had a few questions with him on the 4th of July parade and if there's anything we can do to help there. So I'll be uh, hopefully hearing back from him soon. So everyone, stay safe, look out for each other, uh, pay attention, get involved, and I'll catch you all in the next day or two.